Hi, I'm here with Richard Draycott of Intel, General Manager of High Performance Computing, and we thought we'd take a little break outside here, um, get some fresh air, and, and hear what Intel's plans are in the HPC space. Now, if you hear a couple buses go by, uh, we apologize for that. Um, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to Richard and let him tell you about HPC at Intel. Thanks, Doug. Well, it's been an exciting week all around. Uh, we've had, first of all, a launch of a brand new technology, uh, manufacturing technology, which is 45 nanometers, which we've introduced uh, using a new technology called Hafnium. Uh, this enables us to drive Moore's law even uh, further out than we have in the past. Really gets us to products where we can drive higher performance at existing power levels. So improving our performance per watt, if you will. Um, Associated with that process introduction, we've introduced a number of new processors and chipsets. Uh, primarily the Xeon 5400, which is a new quad-core, second-generation quad-core processor, uh, very much optimized for high-performance computing, faster front-side bus, bigger caches, uh, doing excellent performance. And that goes hand-in-hand -hand with a new chipset called the 5400, which supports that faster front-side bus, really large memory footprints, up to 128 uh, gigabytes of RAM. It's also our lead platform for PCI Express Generation 2. So this platform overall is going to give anything from 20 to 60% performance improvement on most high-performance compute workloads. In addition to that, we're introducing a dual-core version of the processor for different kinds of workloads or licensing situations. So that was the big news from a product standpoint, but it's been a great week too because of the top 500 news. Uh, we have moved up the rankings here from 289 back in June to 354. So that's now over 70% of the systems on the top 500 are based on Intel processors. What's more dramatic underneath that, several things. First of all, three of the top five are Intel based. Uh, interesting, one in Asia, in India in fact, one in America, and one over in Europe, so a good diversity there. In addition, if you look at how the top 500 is changing because of the multi-core technology, already, barely less than two years after we introduced uh, the Xeon 5300 series, we have 40% of the top 500 is dual-core Xeon-based, and 20% of the top 500 is already quad-core Xeon-based. So that's a product, that latter one has only been out barely a year, already 20% of the listing is based on that architecture. So we expect to see not only a, uh, this kind of shift over to many core, multi-core, but with the new platforms that we just introduced, we think we're going to continue to see really great performance out of these platforms over the next year. Another thing that might be of interest to uh, listeners is, uh, and viewers is the power technology, how um, uh, you know, Intel seems to be doing such a great job of managing the power of the needed for the processors and staying within a real manageable envelope. And it seems like the, the new releases are hitting that mark as, just as the old processors as well. Right, exactly. What we have done over the last few years is define a certain number of power uh, envelopes, if you will, that the systems vendors can continue to work within and we can deliver more and more performance within those same power levels. At the same time, both at the uh, process technology level, we're ensuring that we get better and better performance per watt. Uh, a good example, if you look at the fastest previous generation of Xeon, what you could buy off the shelf last week, the fastest 80 watt version of the part was actually 2.3 gigahertz. Uh, with the new Harpertown processors, the 5400, you can actually get a 3 gigahertz 80 watt part. So we're delivering, thanks to this 45 nanometer process, we're delivering much more performance within the same power envelope. Uh, going beyond that, the dual core version will actually run at even higher speeds and also support uh, 40 watt levels. So we've really designed to uh, a mainstream 80 watt level, uh, a high density 40 or 50 watt level for things like blades, uh, or high density situations and we also have for the for the screamers we have the 130 watt power level as well